Hey, what's going on, guys? I'm Steve. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. If it's your first time stopping by the channel, hit that subscribe button. Trust me, you won't regret it. You're a returning subscriber as always, guys. Welcome back, and I do appreciate the support. Guys, listen. I had my seven-year-old daughter with me this whole weekend, right? And um, we both had a wonderful time. You know, when you have children, especially little girls, they're a little bit different than little boys. I have all boys. This is my only little girl. And um, when you have your children around you, it's a good feeling, or it should be a good feeling. You know, we played games, laughed. I let her beat on me and wrestle me and stuff, you know, like kids do. Had a really good time. She, she really enjoys the company of her father. But I notice when I have my daughter with me, I watch her, you know, when she's sitting there by herself, you know, I look at her, I look at her eyes, you know, the wonder in her eyes when she sees me, when she's having fun, when she's focused on something, just doing a simple task, or when she's just having quiet time to herself, she's really enjoying life. And a lot of us as adults, we, you know, we have a lot of pressures on us in the adult world that children don't have. And I said to myself, when my daughter was born, I would try to preserve as much as her life being worry free as I can until the time comes for her to leave the nest and be an adult on her own. And the reason why I brought this up is because I have a protective spirit from not just my children, those that are around me and those I care about. That includes you guys right here, my subscribers and those that watch these videos. I don't get on here and I don't say a bunch of crazy stuff for views. I bring up a lot of topics that are touchy and a lot of stories that need to be told by those who are not here to tell it or too young to tell it. Guys, I did a story last week. And the reason why I brought up my daughter is because she's the same age as this little boy. This little boy pictured up here is no longer with us. And I did a story about him last week and I couldn't really get it out of my mind. His name is Deshaun Williams. His name wasn't mentioned in the story I did. And, um, it's unfortunate that this happened to uh, little Deshaun. And this is something that continues to happen. And I don't know how people do this. The situation with this uh, little boy, right? Deshaun Williams was at the hands of his mother and her boyfriend. A scenario we see playing out all too often. Idiot uh, parent. Let some complete stranger come in and just dominate the child. But this case is a little bit different. Not only did he take the life of little Deshaun, his mother aided. In the video, he gave graphic details of what happened. And it is some more insightful details in this uh, article that uh, I want to play. And a couple of things that really stood out to me that I want to talk about. Now, guys, I know these stories are depressing and a lot of times they're upsetting. But we cannot be desensitized to what's going on around us. How people do people in the community, how people do their children, how people let other people do their children. Children are supposed to be born out of love, not out of just a normal human act. A lot of times children nowadays are just things. They're not even like human beings in the eyes of those that are meant to protect them. Let me play this news article and we'll come back and talk about this. I mean, I don't really know how to react. It's my oldest son. The prosecutor says seven-year-old Deshaun Williams was severely tortured and killed, allegedly by his mother and her mother's boyfriend. The injuries that caused his death were within a day. Um, however, his body shows marks and scars from prolonged abuse. According to the prosecutor, the cause of seven-year-old Deshaun's death was blunt force trauma to the head and pelvis. But there's more. He had a right subdural hematoma and his pelvis was separated into two, broken half. And there's also evidence that Deshaun had been abused for a while in the basement of their east side Detroit home on Hurlbut. His body is covered in scratches, scrapes, cuts, burns all over his face, his back, his front side, his legs and his feet. 
And the prosecutor said Deshaun was abused even after he died so severely that we can't even say it on television. You know the mother. Is this something that the mother would would do? Not in my eyes. I mean, she was she was never that type of person in my eyes. I didn't really get to spend much time with Alicia and talk to her. I just can't see nobody doing this to a kid. Deshaun's grandmother remembers the seven-year-old. He was a happy kid. He didn't let on. I, I don't know if he didn't, you know, want us to know or maybe somebody threatened him and tell him not to say nothing, but he didn't let on to us that he was in any type of pain, being abused or anything. He was always stand-up guy for just like me. It was my meaning me. All right, guys. Um, that was the uh, article. And uh, there's a lot of things that I'm thankful for as a parent. Now, regardless of how, you know, the relationships are with a lot of you guys out there and people that you have children by, whether it's a guy or a girl, sometimes things don't work out the way we want them to work out. And we have a child here. Regardless of what's going on, we got to put our differences aside because we have a life here that bo belongs to both of us. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I think it's blinking my subscribe button. It's blinking on here. Anyway, <laughs> um, when you have a child, regardless of what you're going through, the overwhelming feeling of responsibility is what you would think most people have. But it seems like nowadays, people just have children because it's a bodily function that's just a byproduct of having sex. They used to have Planned Parenthood out here. I don't even know if they still have it. You know, somebody can let me know in the uh, comments. But I mean, from a common sense standpoint, even when I was at a younger age, I knew that if I, I didn't want to have a child unless I was capable of taking care of it or I had a plan for said child. Now, the plans might not work out, but a child is your reset button for you to put the best that's in you into that child so they don't make the same mistakes in their life and fall for the traps that you fell for that a lot of people wasn't there to warn you about. That's one of the great things about having children. It's like a reset button on your life where you can live vicariously through their success. And I took full advantage of that. For the most part, my children are all successful. They're alive. They're doing what they have to do. They have access to me if they want to talk. I've been blessed to having good kids for the most part. I mean, boys do what boys do sometimes, but for the most part, I was lucky. But a lot of that came from me and came from their mothers. You see what I'm saying? I was active in their lives. I love my children. And I'm sure a lot of people out there do. Sometimes differences between man and woman get so messed up that children suffer. And I think this is one of them. Did you see the father? Seemed like he was visibly upset. But he said one thing that sparked me to do this video. He said, I really don't know her like that and talk to her like that. That right there from what he said leads me to believe they had a baby, two passing ships in the night. You got a kid. Frequently he's seen the kid. But I don't think it was enough. You know, a child will be happy regardless of what's being done to them because their minds are full of wonder and they're still children. They had this boy in a basement and tortured him. They tortured him. Seven years old, same age as my daughter. But I had a new lease on life. Same thing she probably liked. Roblox and things like that, he probably liked. Same wonder in her eyes, he had it. How do you let a stranger come into your home? More just a stranger, period. How do you pick him over your own child that you birthed? The memories of seeing him from an infantile state all the way up to where he could walk and talk and somewhat do for himself and believe in you as his hero and his protector. How could you do that to him? For some dick. And we're going to keep it real in here today. It's Monday morning. We're going to fire this thing up. There are a lot of people out here, men too, get these uh, girls and 
Pick them over the child. This is a part of you. If he do that to your kid, what do you think he'll do to you? And I'm going to tell you another thing. It's a different angle to that too. Men only let you do what, what only do what you let them do, ladies. She probably was like, you know, he probably sensed that she, the way she talked to him and the way she beat him, it was okay in a green light for him to abuse uh, the Sean Williams too. Then on top of that, like I said, men are visual. We visual. The dad probably wasn't coming around. He probably didn't even know the father. That's another thing, uh, ladies. If you bring a man in your house, you better stop bad mouthing the father of these kids because it goes into them. And then all of a sudden, everything you say, because you're the only one telling the story, becomes true in his mind. Oh, the dad ain't nothing. The dad ain't this. The dad don't care for him. All this other stuff. And all of a sudden, you push that same hatred or vitriol you have for the man into this guy. And then from him, from a male standpoint, he hit that child hard. He has no ethereal tie to that child. When I say ethereal, it's no spiritual tie to that child because he didn't birth said child. It's not of his DNA. If a child was not mine, I would never put my hands on the kid. And if it got too bad when mom ain't doing what she's supposed to be doing and I can't really deal with it, then I'm ethos because I'm not going to get gray hairs in my head over somebody that don't want to see them child successful and correct it. Now, I'm not saying you go and beat on kids and nothing like that, but I mean, there's certain things children must know coming up from two different uh, angles of both sexes in the household. They have to watch how we react. A boy will look at a relationship between his mother and the father or like two, a woman, man and a woman in a house together in longevity, different than a woman will look at it. I mean, a little girl will look at it. Why? Because they're two opposite sex and they think differently and their roles will manifest in front of them of what it is when someone on the opposite sex loves you. It's so, listen, man, the nuclear family, it seems like they're trying to dismiss that and try to push that out the door. And when I say nuclear friend, I mean like a mother and a father and the roles that they have that the children must learn from. They're trying to push that out. And this is why we got all of this violence, all of this craziness, people eating each other alive out there because we have forgotten who we are as human beings and where we should be going forward as a community and just period as successful people. A lot of this stuff is passed down generation to generation. We in a time right now where self-expression is taught to young people at a younger age where adults are putting a lot of uh, political stuff, thoughts in children's heads to where they giving them freedoms that they themselves don't even understand. You guys hear where I'm going with this? I don't want to ramble too long on this. They said this boy had a right subtural, uh, subtural hematoma. That means he had bleed on his brain. They said his pelvis was broken in half, split down the middle. That means he was on the ground at one point and somebody jumped or they took a heavily weighted object and threw it and hit his pelvis and snapped it. That's one of the biggest and strongest bones in your body. And for it to get snapped, on a seven-year-old child, the strength that it took to do that was nothing but hate. They both hated this boy. At what point when you was doing all of this stuff to him, was you, nobody said that's enough or, hey, he had, mo listen, multiple bruises, heavy bleeding on the brain, his face, his feet, his back, front of his legs, his burns. God only knows the hell this boy endured in that house with no way out. Hit so many times that he can't even get a chance to recover from the last blow that was devastating to him. Looking around for somebody to help him and no help came. Children are an asset, not a liability.
We need to think about that. I'm Stock Market Steve for the Dynamic Reason channel. As always, like, comment, share, and subscribe. Man, listen, children are the best of all of us. We need to take care of that. Because when we get older, if we keep raising the generation we are of uncaring, un insensitive human beings, we're going to take care of us at the end. I'm just saying, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.